Paul Johnson was born in Rutland and raised in Weston, Vermont. When he got out of high school, he became a year-round employee at Bromley, installing snowmaking in the summer and teaching skiing in the winter. I worked my way through the ranks as a ski instructor up to a supervisor, you know, as an assistant director, and when I became the director. When I was supervising and assistant director, it was the heyday of the midweek ski weeks. Stig Albertson, who owned Bromley Mountain, had sold it to Stratton Mountain, and Stratton Mountain asked him to come over and run both resorts. He asked me to come over and run the operations. Years later, after we got to snowboarding there, I became the vice president of operations. In 1983, Paul took note of the excitement and passion of local kids who were following Jake Carpenter to snowboard wherever they could. I finally said to Jake, come on up, bring some boards up, and I'll get a group of management here together and, and we'll, go, we'll go give it a try. So we have our Sorrells on, we strap ourselves in, and Jake's going, no, 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 come over here and let me teach you how to do this. And we went, <laughs> no, we, we jumped on the little Tyrolean beginner lift and up we went. Um, half of us made it off the top. None of us made the first turn. Someone hit the first tower. Shortly after, we went up to the conference room. Um, no one liked it. No one, no one wanted to give it a try. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I was probably on that bench too. No one really likes it, but I'm gonna give it a try. We didn't have rental boards, so Jake had to start producing boards for us. And then one day I went up to the beginner hill and there was 50 kids learning how to snowboard and 10 people learning how to ski. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it took off so big and then you know, Jake grabbed the ball and ran. I think that's about the time he moved up to Burlington. But not everyone was pleased about this explosion of snowboarders riding on their mountain. They made footprints, they made too much noise, they scared people, they were hoodlums, they were thugs. It was, the first year was not fun. There were a lot of people very upset about snowboarding at Stratton. There was an HOA meeting at Stratton Mountain Inn. I, I would say there were 7,000 people there. It was probably more like 300, but it felt like 7,000 because they were all breathing down my neck. We probably lost some clientele, but I had to run the gamut. I had to, I had to keep going and we, ha we had to give it a try. But the deluge of snowboarders bore out Paul's judgment. And in 1985, he invited the Snowboard Nationals to Stratton, beginning a 30-year run of the resort staging, the U.S. Open Snowboard Championships, open to all professional and amateur boarders. The early competitions just copied alpine racing. If you look at the old early stuff, I mean, Andy Coughlin, when he would come down that slope, he's in Sorrells doing 58 miles an hour, you know? <laughs> Everything changed when Paul constructed a half pipe for the 1988 U.S. Open. I had convinced the ownership at Stratton that if you're going to make snow for beginners, you got to have a minimum of 18 inches to a foot. When they showed up and saw that, I had put 14 feet of snow vertically in a big square on the slope. They went, what are you doing spending all this money making this snow here? I said, well, if you do the comfortable carrying capacity of this, I'm gonna make twice as much money because I'm gonna put 200 kids on this with lift tickets within an acre and a half. Snowboard competition at Stratton became a major factor driving the popularity of the sport. You know, the half pipe was the first thing. And we went to start doing big air contests. You know, we built a gap jump. And, and the half pipe in the Sun Bowl was I mean, much more challenging. Uh, the, when I went to the 25th, I think there were 20 foot walls. Um, that thing was steep. That was a big pipe. But that's some flying right there. Those kids were flying out of that thing. The, the snowboarding took it to a whole different level. It was a bumpy road for a while, but we made the right decision. 